All, All right. right. So, Damaris um, leaves the office. Um, Criella, more or less confused about Damaris's sudden change in opinion. Uh, maybe <laughs> she maybe she figured it out herself a little bit too. Um, but it's uh, on to I believe Damaris <laughs> ha has a plan. That seemed like it. Uh, uh, so we'll I think so. Anyway, hand it over to you. Uh, I'm gonna go to the temple. Just make your way straight into the center of the city. Are you yeah. grabbing us? Um, I guess so. I don't know where I would find you guys. I guess I can. Uh, I'm just chilling out like, of the city. You stumble uh, upon each other. You guys are not hard to miss. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm sure law-abiding citizens that would never draw attention to our group in a city like this. Just like I figured three, out what my three tieflings is. and a crow. It's uh. <laughs> Not not a not a bunch that blends in very well. Not yeah. a common sight around here. <laughs> um, so you make your way um, up the up the slanted roads towards the temple, and it is up close. It is it is very spectacular. It's uh, the architecture is extremely intricate. It's um, it's a hugely tall building, maybe the tallest building any of you have ever seen. Um, Probably the tallest building any of you have ever seen by like a sizable margin. I've never um, seen a building before. And there's like, there's there's statues and gargoyles and um, and and fantastic stone carvings and art everywhere. And and stained glass and just very, very beautiful like work of art type of building. Um, and as you as you go through the giant doors into the main hall. You hear the sort of singing of of the clerics and um, uh, and and types of worship going on, and you see people um, like commoners coming and going, um, taking a seat and and making a prayer here and there. Um, so is everyone here like a cleric and like clearly like a? Uh... They just worship kind of way, or is there anything that's like indicates that they have like a special religious guard of kind of some kind? No, most most of the people here are just like dressed in robes. Like okay. I would say, I would say monks, but in the Christian sense, not in the D and D sense. Yeah, yeah I understand. <laughs> um, and they're all they're all sort of doing their thing. And as you make your way into the building, as you come into the center of this room, you you can stare straight up, and it, there's actually like. Um, uh, you can see all the way up to the top from this main room, um, and and straight up is a uh, is like a circular stained glass window directly at the top. But it's quite far up. You can uh, almost like barely the, see it from here. The noonday sun would shine right through it. Almost, yeah. Yeah. Bam! Another temple. But this is a good one. Oh, where was the? The other one was a ziggurat. Oh, that was a ziggurat, yeah. So There's wait, oh my god, he's yeah, a geometry okay. angel. If this one doesn't work out, he'll go find like a like he'll go find a cylinder next or a sphere. What? what? Well, because the okay. first one was a ziggurat, which was like a bunch of steps, and this is like okay. a tall rectangle. I'm pretty sure, unless he said it was circular. I don't remember him saying it was circular, but tall it's, it's and It's irregularly shaped. He loves shapes, even if they're irregular. All all shapes matter. Anyway, I bring everybody in on what I think is happening because uh, Love Anders apparently an angel was sort of we don't know if he's half or whatever. Is he Satan? Is he D and D Satan? Roll a religion check. All right, <laughs> give me a second. I'm gonna figure out if he's D and D Satan or not. The ziggurat we were in was for the su sun setting and rising. Either that's either one person or two people, maybe also. And this is the noonday sun. I got an eleven. <laughs> okay, Lovander is, as far as you know, not D and D Satan. <laughs> he's okay, so I don't think he's D and D Satan, but he could be. Okay, Damaris is uh, assembling a, a CSI wall in his mind. Yeah. 
the mindscape. It's like, yeah, it's like a Charlie, that Charlie name. Let's go name. Sherlock. Always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, are we sure it's not cats? Have we ruled out the theory that it might be cats? I'm pretty sure it's evil cats. <laughs> yeah. There, oh, there are 10 to 15% more cats in this city than in other cities. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Peculiar. Right, that's coincidence? That's a meme from another campaign. Not. Oh my god. It's gotta be um, cats. Okay, so would, uh, would Damaris like to try to explain his, his theory? Lilandra or construct a theory? here for this temple. Or something, maybe something in this temple will help us know more about him. I don't know. Uh, but maybe if we can talk to whoever the head person is that's here, maybe they would know more, and maybe they can do something or talk to this angel. Yeah, let's ask the people who worship these people if they know about these people. Exactly. <laughs> is that how you investigate are we doing Wait, it properly I'm, I'm sorry who are you asking about what <laughs> we're asking these people about these people what part is un hard to understand uh, I, I, I see i see <laughs> we're uh yeah we wanna, I, I, my idea and if anyone wants to do something else let me know is okay. to talk to the head person at this temple about this angel and maybe potentially Lavander. I don't think they would cause a panic, right? Hmm. Well, let's not uh, say. So let's not tell them the what's watch, happening. Be on the watch for a giant bear somewhere, potentially. I don't know. Oh wait, why? What, that's what's... that's low on the totem pole. That's only seven gold. I used to know <laughs> a bear once. I used to know a tiger once. Dude, really? That's so cool. Wait, like an actual tiger? Uh, no. Oh. He was, he was raised by tigers. Was, he was, yeah, he was raised by tigers. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so you, uh, <laughs> you pick out the person in the fanciest robes you can see. Um, These people. Okay, step one done. And you make your way up to them. Uh, what would you like to say? Father, forgive me for I have sinned. He looks up at you and he's like, we don't, we don't do that here. This isn't one of, <laughs> this isn't one of those. We're, we're, a, we're an LGBT friendly type of place. Oh, okay. So no sins. I got it. Um, so. No, but, um, but he looks up at you as you guys approach. I don't know. Good morrow, sir. Do you know about Good, uh... these people? Which people? Do you, do you <laughs> have a moment to speak about the end times? Oh my god, we need info. I'm sorry? We do need you have a moment to speak about the end times? Um... I suppose? <laughs> I pull, I pull Damaris Great. off him. Damaris, Great. you're coming in too hot. He's, you're coming in too hot. He, he's looking at you with like a very like weird looking face. <laughs> you gotta I'm relax. Sure he's like, I'm what sure the you, fuck are you, you talking know, about? I'm sure you know about the giant light in the sky that has happened recently. Yeah. And how it's, it suddenly it's gone now. It right, hasn't right, been right. there for a while. Um, my sources tell me that this is a city for an archangel. Yeah. Um, He's like, he, he, you're just, <laughs> you see, yeah. you, just for context, you've come up to him and been like, yeah. would you like me to tell you how the world is ending? And yeah. then told him a bunch of things he already knew. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's like, to, he's like, are you I'm guys like mentally I'm, sound? I'm explaining for the audience. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I, I, I do know how this city is dedicated to an archangel, yes. Presumably they're supposed to prevent uh, the end times, yes? Well, 
I don't I don't think I don't think the world's ending ending anytime soon. He's losing me now. I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but that tear in the sky was definitely a sign of the end times. I have a source that can confirm that. He's just not here right now. <laughs> you don't know her. She goes to a different school. <laughs> she lives in Canada. Um, His name is Alistair. You may have heard of him. Oh okay, God. well, I suppose, but the, the light is gone now. The sky is, is fixed. Um... So yeah, so um, <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going. With and this the sun reaches Zertha... high yet again. I... Do right, you know? So, uh, does Zertha fight off things like that? Is that why the, so the, the, the city the now? city is called uh, Zertha, yeah. and the archangel is called the Zerathel. Zerathel. Okay. Um. X e r a t h e l. Excuse me, holy man. May I ask you a question? You just did. Let me ask you another. We just did. May I ask you two more? He's, he's chuckling. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Um, do you know if Insert Angel is a real angel? And it's the name of the guy from the ziggurat? Um, you mean Lovander? Lovander? Yeah. Well, of course, yes. What's his deal? Well, he, uh... He sort of stops to think for a moment and he's like, Well, every every morning, Lovander picks the sun up from below the material plane and rises it up into the sky and hands it off to Zarathel, who has it shine bright. And she takes it over to the other side and hands it back to him for him to lower softly down. Damn. So okay. he's, he's a D&D &D Apollo. Not Satan. We missed it just by a little bit. But yeah, just we missed the mark by a little bit. Just a tiny bit. All right. Do you know if he's um, good or bad? Well, I never. So I think the the workings of of the heavens are are beyond the simple morality of you and me. Right, Likely story. Right. I never thought I would ask this and actually uh, want to really know the answer to this question. Um, but what time of day is it? Right now? Yeah. It's like, I don't know, mid-afternoon? Like after afternoon. So... I feel oh. like something bad's gonna happen when the sun goes down or when the sun comes up. I don't think are you saying are you saying this come. to him or just to yourself? Uh, to myself. Okay. Um, I think the sun's not gonna come up. Also, maybe that. Maybe he's tired of his job. Does Does Zerthel and Lovander have a th have a third friend, buddy, that does something with the sun? Maybe or the maybe stars. The or well, the stars. um, you see that uh, they're both. Um, did fucking look up the name. Um, one day I'll find it. One day. Nope. One day. It do not exist. It's B A G R I V E R. B I A G R I V E E R. My favorite place to just chill, you know. If I'm gonna go, if I there's one place I want to be in the world, it's at B A G R I V E R. What? That's the big, ri uh, the uh, the large river we passed what? on the way here. No. Yeah, it's like called Biag Revere. Okay, so um, so he he's sort of he's sort of <laughs> gonna go into a little bit deeper of the story, but so he says they're both um, they're both angels of uh. Oh my god! I just lost the fucking. I just found the name. Fuck. This guy's a hack. Okay, they're both um, uh, they're both angels of the god Lathander, the god of of uh, life and, and birth and renewal, and together they are in, in charge of rising the sun every day and holding it high in the sky and setting it softly every night. Right. 
So, you know, angels, they have sort of a hierarchical structure. There's a, a god up top, and he has many of his angel friends, and they all have various duties, and, um, um, Lovander and Zarathel are the two most important archangels to the, um, or two of the most important archangels to their god, and, um, are thus very powerful, and... Yeah, I know that. Um, so, hypothetically, if one of them, I guess, didn't like their job anymore, hmm. do you think Zarathel would, uh, stop that? Well, I, th I think they're both quite, quite pleased with their job. They... I think they, I think they, they must love the beauty. I don't think you can uh, do the same job every day for millions of years and, and dislike it. But hypothetically, uh, if, if one w got tired of, you know, bringing the sun up and putting it down and not having the glory of holding it, uh, I, uh, you think they would, uh, I don't know, just start off, start off the top of my head, uh, make a hole to hell? Um, that seems a little far-fetched. <coughs> I don't, I don't think that's how that would, that would play out. Maybe they would try to find replacements and, and, and pick something else to do, but <laughs> taking a hole to hell seems a little bit out of there, uh, out of, out of character. It does, doesn't it? Um, do they have, like, I don't know. Fuck, I don't know. Does anybody else have any questions they want to ask? <laughs> Are there any ange other angels uh, that are of high importance? Oh, well, certainly there are many of them. Can you give me like a top ten list? <laughs> I don't. I don't think I could. No. In the Watch Mojo style, Watch preferably. Mojo. <laughs> well, many, many of the the angels are are more private than 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 Sarathel or Lovander, and many of them. Uh, don't even have names that we could speak. Um, most of them are just content to work in the name of their god and 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 do as they are told. Hmm. How do you know they're real? But if they don't, um, is there something you guys would do to fight a fallen angel? Is there? Is there? something that's happened in the past you guys have like a guard what if I don't know how do you know your god's real well if you weren't real how would I be able to do this and he <laughs> just cast some uh, some simple and just flashy looking magic just like the type of magic like the type of magic you'd like like party trick kind of magic I am thoroughly pleased <laughs> uh, like prestigitation. <laughs> yeah, like that type of thing. Just, just... <laughs> this, I believe in God now. I'm ready to convert. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean the gods in D and D are real. Yeah, well, as far just as anyone so... knows, yeah. I don't. I don't think anyone's met them, but I guess. I guess I can't bite that. <laughs> I'm gonna meet one of these gods and eat them and become god myself. Well, I that's not celestial specific. plane. <laughs> Watch out next time I'm at the, uh, the celestial DMV. <laughs> I'm gonna get my papers in order, but will yours be in order? This Sunday, Mort takes on heaven <laughs> to become god. Yeah, so I mean, you get you get the sense he's he's perfectly willing to answer your questions. Um, <laughs> if you had any, but it, 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 if you're looking for like 
uh, hey, tell me what exactly is going on here. He doesn't well, have that kind uh, of... Yeah, because well, nothing's happened yet. Is what I'm gathering. Uh, what, what's the significance of this temple? Is there anything special here? Of, you know, that um, belongs to Zeratho? Well, nothing quite that belongs to her, but I suppose this is maybe the only place that worships her, and that's... Uh, always important to those who are worshipped. Um, and, you know, the power of, of those in the heavens is is directly related to, to how fervently um, their followers believe in them. The more people worship a certain god, the more the power grows. And as far as we know, the same holds true for angels. Does anybody worship love? Hmm. I think people used to, but not quite anymore. Yeah, because who would want to worship somebody who just puts the sun up and down? Am I right? Maybe that's why all this is going on. It feels like he's yeah. being forgotten. None of these guys are bronies, and you can tell. What? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Google it later. I know what a brony oh, no. is. <laughs> Because like in the show, in the hit show, My Little Pony, they worshipped an alicorn who put the sun up. Yeah, and then her sister is the moon. Yeah, and the sister put the moon down, so we're having a situation like similar here. Oh, you're right, yeah, from like... Yeah, so like none of these I guys are I promise I didn't steal my plotline from My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> like, not, not that I would know, but that's like the first uh -huh. episode or something, right? Yeah, hmm, something like that, yeah, of course. At the end yeah. of this session, we're gonna be like, "Dear Princess Zerthiel." <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Don't Today, when you want to copy a story from every mythology in the history of ever, and pick My Little Pony. <laughs> Today, I learned that it's okay to accept random party members into your party for the sake of the greater good. For the sake of the plot. Thank you, Princess. See you next week, maybe. <laughs> oh my God! Amazing. Um, anyway. Uh, is there, like, a really big shrine here? Well, You're looking at it? The, <laughs> he sort of gestures all around you. The whole <laughs> I mean, like, is there, like, a, a specific spot where people will go to pray? Yeah, here. I think, um... Yeah, you're looking at it! <laughs> I mean, in here, you nincompoops. When, uh... <laughs> like, a, like, is there an altar? Table. Is there an altar? Well, when we are, are trying to, to do something particularly um, strong or, or difficult, we'll, we'll sit directly in the center and, and wait for wait for noon to to cast our, our most powerful magic, but I, that's about it, I suppose. Hmm. Well, that's already happened. That sounds important. I'll write that down. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So we potentially need to watch out at the sun setting, the sun rising, and at noon. Damn, that's every maybe, single time. Maybe noon, though, because that would be the time to kill the angel. Maybe don't say that out loud, dog. Oh my God, sir! <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming I'm assuming you haven't said that out loud. <laughs> Brain blast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's, where's I'm trying going? to think of a pun so I can do the like CSI. Yeah. Let's look like this angel is getting on. stabbed on. Yeah. Uh, looks like we could use some sunscreen. Uh, I don't know. I'll think of something. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I think Lovander is gonna try to kill Zarathel at noon tomorrow. Yeah. Are you saying that out loud? Um, we should probably whisper that. To, to adjust my party members. Say it in Thieves' Camp. Okay. 
Yeah, that, that, way know, all you you will, that's what, that way all of you will. That way all of you will understand. I'll yell it. I'll, I will yell it in thieves can't. You should start. Oh my god. <laughs> my, that is a very plump watermelon you have. The owl that's, flies high in the night. That's what translates to. Well, Vander is going to kill Xerathil at noon. <laughs> and, and mine translates to there's cheese in the cottage pudding. In the cottage pudding? What? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I'm learning Thieves Camp, slowly but surely. Well, anyway. No, I don't do that, but. Yeah, uh, I think that's what's going to happen, and maybe we should tell somebody. We're not going to cause a panic here. But if everyone uh, worships this angel, is going to be in this exact room and cast magic to do. What do you guys do at noon exactly? Well, sometimes there's a gravely ill person, or, um, or I don't know. Um, this one's just between you and me. Sometimes we like res resurrect people, but don't. Don't let anyone know. Okay. okay. Um, My lips are why? sealed. Both of them. Is that a big no-no in the... No, it's just... Uh, I mean... Or is, it more like, is it more like a don't let them know that they died, we resurrect them kind of thing? It's more of a, like, don't, don't go making it public information because if suddenly the city figures out that we can resurrect people, um, everyone's just gonna ask us to resurrect everybody. Oh, okay. I wink. They um, could make a religion out of this. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I don't okay. know why, but I think it should have to do with eggs. I whisper to Damaris, what's the name of the guy at the ziggurat one last time, please? <laughs> Lavander. I walk up to the father, the holy, the holy father. Yes. Hello. Hello. L uh, Lavander is coming here. <laughs> Why would he do that? I don't know. Well, I think I know why. Why? Because no one worships him anymore. I think he's gonna try to kill Zera Zerathel. 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 Um. That's quite a, quite a tall tale there. Yeah. It no, is. I... Thank you for your concern. Would um, you say sorry, that it was a joke. Is is uh. Dude, if I don't know. this guy seems intimidated, let's well, just I don't, say it was I don't a joke. really, I don't really expect Zarathel to make an appearance. Nor do I expect Lovander to make an appearance. Nor do I expect them to fight each other. Yeah, that'd be silly. Ha 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 ha. Oh, um. You'll ha, ha, please excuse my ha. friend. He's had one too many drinks. He's well, stayed up all night reading stories, and he um, seems to tell tall tales now. I, I, I hope you all enjoy the beautiful sun today. Thank um, you. Yeah. And gets up to like walk away very weirded out by that interaction yeah yes yeah. do good work remember stay vigilant i wink <laughs> i wink at him too if you tell people to stay vigilant and then wink at them it makes them think you're gonna try to attack them yourself <laughs> <laughs> stay vigilant wink <laughs> but it but it makes them stay vigilant probably i don't know if that's proven i think that's uh, the opposite of proven out. actually so, something is probably going to happen at sunset, sunrise, or noon. I'm thinking noon. Let's just stalk out the... I'm thinking the, the angel is either going to be distracted because she's holding the sun. <laughs> and then we'll get shot in the head. I will I will point out, best you, best you guys know the, the, like, idea of someone literally holding up the sun is, like just oh, a little bit of a fairy tale like i mean she probably uses magic or something that is like that is like the responsibility like as far as your understanding of religion that's like 
that's her responsibility and it's depicted as her literally holding up the sun she's not actually standing there holding up the sun well to be fair in my little pony she fair. wasn't holding up the sun either to be fair no hands um but yeah if she still has to do it and maybe uses magic to do it maybe she's still holding quote air quotes the sun and she'll be vulnerable exactly um, I just want to help you a little bit, a little bit here. So, okay, yeah. So, Low Vander is on like the material plane, like he's on Earth, best yeah. you know, and Zarathel is best you know still in the celestial, celestial plane. Yeah. Um. So it's like. So I. It's think not. It's not can... like. It's not like he can like shoot her. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he's still gonna do something. She's I don't know shoot what. With a gun. Are you thinking maybe it could be a ritual? Yeah. Or like, maybe he's just gonna destroy the city. I don't know. What if, what? What if, it, what if it's not? What if it's not an army he's raising, but in fact it, they're sacrifices? Why is ritual? he on the terrestrial plane? <laughs> we don't know. You guys, you guys don't know. Hmm. I assume it's because he's bitter about not being worshipped anymore. What if he got kicked I out of heaven? That. Or that. Maybe Have you guys ever tried talking down. to him? It seems like all you guys do is fight. Uh, he did try to bribe us. and uh... should have just talked to him. Ask him how he's doing. See if he needs help. Well, he was drilling a hole to hell. How do we know he's the villain here? Well, he was drilling a hole to hell. So? Well, that is just an entry away for his army to take over. He's from heaven. Well, it I was... Feel like, I feel like... I forget, you're new here. He was doing that to, we believe, attack the celestial plane. Yeah? Oh. Or am I, am I, am I, I mean, you remembering? Wouldn't, you wouldn't have been explicitly told that, but if you want to, if you want to infer that, that's like. I can't remember if we did. I feel like that. drilling a hole to hell is a terrible way to fight celestials, considering there's a whole other plane, isn't it? Yeah. So, you, well, so he's like, going the wrong way, first of all. So maybe he's just well, racist. Well, maybe, maybe you can only get to the celestial plane from the material plane. Maybe I don't he's know. just gonna do a genocide in so, hell. In terms um, of, in terms of your best like plane shifting knowledge, yeah. the nine hells are connected to the abyss. Mm -hmm. So the hells are where devils come from, right? And it's connected to the abyss, which is where demons come from. And right. that plane is literally under the material plane. Right. So the celestial dig... plane is not literally over the material plane. So right. the idea of drilling down to hell makes enough sense. The idea of drilling up to heaven makes no sense at all. <laughs> but that, that is what he told you he was trying to do. Drill to heaven? No, drill to hell. Well, mm. drill to both of them. And he was making a tear in the sky that I don't know what he was doing. I don't think he's the villain, TBH. Yeah, we've already seen how angels come from the celestial plane. You know, shattered sky, beam of light. He's going about this all wrong. I think the gun has been jumped a bit. Maybe they. Maybe he is D and D Satan. Are, are we the baddies? Oh my God, are we the bad guys again? <laughs> Again? I only killed a little girl once. <laughs> <laughs> and I we're the bad guys. Oh, and you we're guys the fully bad could, guys. I killed her, Mort just I decided know, to. Mort, we were trying to kill her, and then Mort was like, I <laughs> I thought kill we her. were trying to kill her. <laughs> she was only like, what, 13? She had a good life. She was like eight. Younger oh, than 13. She only had three more years left on her life. <laughs> I, we saw that town. They were basically yeah, she, she dying probably, anyway. She probably would have died before adulthood. It's fine. Yeah, I was just calling. <laughs> you know, Heaven That's DMV amazing. got an angel that day. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> They're probably thanking me feeling, down here. I have a feeling Mort's taking playing God a bit anyway, seriously. Anyway, there's a <laughs> angel, potentially a fallen angel, drilling into hell. The abyss, whatever. Which the angel earlier told you he gave up on. Which he t gave up on. But he's trying to do something. Maybe he's gonna try and drill up to heaven from here. 
who I assume attack the angels, because now they're here. It's always attack the angels. Isn't we just it? found an angel angel killing weapon. What about us? Huh? Alistair's god pointing us to the way. Hmm. I don't know. I want to know what uh, Lavander's all about. I want. I want to ask him questions. If he turns out to be D and D Satan, I want to be on his side. Exactly. I. I I'm not here to like play. <laughs> Satan's guy, always like you know? hunky. I don't know what God looks like. Lavander was pretty hunky when you met him. Yeah, that dude is so hunkalicious, dog. So was that other angel we just met, whose name we didn't get. Yeah, but if all, but like, if we can make more fallen angels, because surely this guy's got some angels on his side too, who would be like ready to fight. That's how, I mean, he, that's like a bunch of angels, but like even better because they have like daddy issues. But, okay, so if he's got <laughs> angels on his side as well as demons, this might not just be a battle we're gonna need. This, this might be something we need to pay attention to. It'll and, be, and find out you more. guys keep talking, I'll be right back. It'll okay. be shirts okay. versus skins. <laughs> yeah. And we'll play touch football for heaven. It'll be a battle to remember. I mean, I guess we don't really know what's going on. Yeah. By the way, for context, are we still doing this whole conversation in front of the priest, or have we left? Oh, the priest uh, left. We're having the he, conversation. Yeah, I see him walking time. away right now. Look at that little <laughs> bastard sitting in the corner praying. I know you can hear me! <laughs> Ridiculous. Where you can't even find like a good cocktail in this town. They don't make it the way I'm used to, you know, like 5% vodka, 2% liqueur, 3% pages. 3% pages. What's the rest of the drink? There. That's it. Oh, okay. I can't get too wet. I mean, I can't handle my alcohol well. Oh, okay. You can't handle your alcohol well, so the entire drink is alcohol and air. <laughs> yeah. I have a problem. <laughs> it's become a real. It's become a problem at home. The, I'm the still trying to get Coco the... keeps telling me I keep coming home and Coco's like, ah, oh, you've been drinking again, and I've been like, yeah, to handle you. And then I throw her across the room, and I'm like, sorry, Coco, I didn't mean it. I'm so sorry, Coco. Um, and then Sean, we don't says, we don't do themes of domestic abuse in our campaign. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to ask you to cut that out. Shit, Look what you make me do. That's your first and only warning. <laughs> <laughs> After that, you're no longer yeah damn so any ideas of what you guys want to do uh no we gotta i don't know we gotta try to s see uh see what this bad guy maybe not bad guy probably the bad guy i wrote bbeg next to his name i just want you guys to know that i wrote big hunky boyfriend material next to his name in my notes <laughs> Um, Big bad so, evil guy. So you guys are gonna go try to <laughs> yeah, find that's, him? That's what it stands for. Yeah. <laughs> Big bad evil guy. That's what BBEG stands for. That Big is bad what evil that stands guy. for. Big bad evil guy. Uh, let's just so, in, let's just sit here and say Big bad evil guy until it becomes noon. <laughs> <laughs> for, a whole, like, for a whole like 22 hours. Big bad evil guy. So if Creole is attuned to this pitchfork, what does it do? It's not a pitchfork. It's a, it's a trident. What's the difference? Um, pitchforks have... Honestly, like a... they look the same. So... Well, well, pitchforks have four, because Pit... four, yeah, not Yeah, pitchforks. Two! <laughs> <laughs> um, and pitchforks also have a curve, because they're meant to actually carry stuff. They're yeah. meant for like carrying hay. Tridents are meant for killing, stabbing stuff. <laughs> this looks like a pitchfork. So what I used to use back at the farm. Fish. Oh my god, this is a big fork. Oh, no, it's a three. It's like a fork that you would. <laughs> this is like a fork you would use for like a tiny sandwich. You would right, put an right, olive so, on it, and you so call it like Poseidon's. Uh, keep what's, going. So what's the attuned spork do? <laughs> 
It, uh, it says it right there in Will's Well, cool. no, I mean, like, when it's attuned to you, does it let her just do all of those things? So you have to you have to attune to it to be able to, like, use the magical properties. Mm. Oh, okay, 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 cool. Um, so yeah, it is hits angels. Yeah. Okay. Um, hits angels. Brutal. If it's driven through the heart of an angel, pinning them to the ground of the material plane, they become paralyzed until it's removed. Look, that's um, how that's how we'll talk that's how to we'll him. That's how we'll talk to him. You're there we go. <laughs> it also has that extra make bit. The good skill check. Um, where you can like sacrifice uh, health yeah, to make it do more damage. Can I ask a question about my Kirby jar? Sure. Is it breakable from the inside? Um, what do you mean? Like, if you try to suck something too big, or? No, like, if, because they can still cast spells inside the jar, can they cast a spell that breaks the jar from the inside? Presumably. Damn. Then we can't use spell it. Spell of unbinding, maybe. Mm. Then I'll use it not combatively, but to suck up people I don't like. Use it for hunting. Well, that rat didn't um, break out, so I assume some animals just can't do anything but bear and take it. Um, but that guy yeah, I mean, at the you bread had me in stand, there for a while. Yeah, but you didn't try and break out. Yeah, we should see how that works. Well, I don't want you to break my Kirby jar. I only have a scythe. It's not like I can use magic. Yeah, but if you break it from the inside, you might it might be one time use it, then technically speaking, in a proverbial if I, sense. If I break it, if I break it from the inside. If I can break it from the inside, nothing else is going to be like useful. You know. <laughs> Yeah, but then I have a broken jar. Does that make me, does that mean you're gonna be little forever though if you break it on your inside? I, oh I my god! The the spell. Oh my god! Let's Cursed not find items. out. I would love no, to find out. That's how it would break. He would unbind the spell and become giant again and break the bottle. That's what you do. We'll suck up the bad guy and then we'll smash the jar and see what happens. I really hope they stay small. <laughs> Then I'll definitely Step use on it on him. this angel dude. Alternatively, maybe it acts like an atom bomb. We don't know. I am not a wizard. Mm -hmm. So just to ask, what exactly happened with your last encounter with him, Lavanda? We ran away because he was too um, intimidating. He, yeah. So, I was just staring at so his not, abs the entire time. So Dammers, so Dammers, no so I he- threw a dagger. I threw yeah. two daggers, missed one. The other one just bounced off of him. He wasn't wearing like plate armor or anything. I don't remember. So, exactly, but... other than the the uh, the angel bane, he seems pretty re resistant to stab types. Yeah, and then so from Alistair what I can gather, something magical, and he like teleported out of the way. Okay. So what we would need to do is have a more um, force-based attack, stun him potentially, and then use the angel bane yeah because like because because if, if, if he's got a nasty habit of moving away from attacks then we need to get him stood still yeah but i think he's a good guy so i'm just gonna fuck him instead well <laughs> let's 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 find out like what he's about first yeah but if he tries anything we know Damn. what the backup plan is at least okay um okay so how do you intend to find him and just start yelling well, for him. I assume he's yeah. coming here. I have a feeling he's gonna find us, yeah. We'll just stake out this uh, church by saying, uh, big bad evil guy. I'll do what I do best and uh, perch up somewhere high. I'll do what I do best and lay down on the ground. Um, like an alive person. Yeah. Like a living, breathing person. Like a living, <laughs> breathable person. Okay. Yeah, we don't know if he's just gonna come here, or if he's gonna bring an army of demons here. You were told that like he's gonna have an the, army. The dude believes he's gonna bring an army. Mm -hmm. So like, you, maybe we should tell somebody to like post guards on the walls or whatever. If there are walls, there's a gatehouse. Be like, hey. Someone's probably on their way here. Um, so, from what you know, you know there's, like, obviously the town guard that you've seen, but, like, there are guards in basically every major city. But you know that, like, town guard aren't really, like, they're more of, like, a police force as opposed to, like, a, an army. 
Yeah, but um, there isn't going to be a time to get a friendly army here. I'll be able and, to... Uh, oh, go ahead. And so the, as far as you know, the closest army presence in the region is... Um, there, there was an army presence in Il Madarez because that's where the, uh, that's where the king hangs out. Yeah. And so that's where the army's like headquarters is. So we're fucked. Yeah. Well, I knew this day was gonna come. I just didn't expect it to be so soon. Maybe. I mean, you don't, you don't have any idea of the timeline either. Like, you weren't told like, oh, he's gonna show up in like two days and two nights or whatever, but. He just told he's like maybe there's a way we can talk to this he be going yeah he well, fully could he, just not show up he could be anywhere so potentially what we would need to do is find a way to attract his attention and give him a reason to come towards us because we're never going to find him by looking aimlessly well i mean to be fair like you might <laughs> We're just gonna be like, walking out in the forest, and there he is, like, just, just, for, just camping. For transparency, it's like you know where you are. Like you know where you are. You believe he's intending to come here, and you know where he's coming from. So, you you might have like at least some shred of an idea. Maybe there's a way to talk to Zerthon. He can be like, "Hey, uh, we think your buddy is gonna try to attack your city." Hmm. What, uh, what can you do to, about it? Right, let's just sit down and pray and see what happens. Yeah, All right. I guess so. I cross I my legs, close my eyes, and start praying. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, Mort's dead, so it, it doesn't work because he doesn't have a soul. <laughs> yeah. mm. <laughs> but every, any, everyone, anyone else can have to go. Do something at noon every day. So maybe she can do something at noon with the sun. I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna try to communicate to the Archangel. Now or like tomorrow I guess, at noon. I guess noon might be the best time to do it. But I also don't know if something's gonna happen between now and then, so I guess I can try now and then later too. We also don't know if they're like open at noon. <laughs> they're like closed due to rituals. Yeah, <laughs> because like they don't want everyone to know that they can do resurrections, so why would they have it open, you know? We don't do it all I feel time. like now that we know that they can do resurrections if they They'll try and send us away, yeah. we can be like, we know your secret. Yeah, but... we can be like, yeah, well, uh, we're gonna blackmail you. Exactly. Um, yeah. The so him him telling you it was sort of like it, noticing that you guys have money, like you're not just like random commoners, like you might uh -huh. be people actually like capable of paying them to do it. Uh, That's okay. sort of why he told you. Um, he didn't he didn't just tell you for fun. <laughs> um, like you're the you're the type of person who would come here asking f for a resurrection and like be willing to pay for it. Um. If you want to try now, you can like try a religion check, um, but with understanding that like even clerics have a tough time like locking down their god for a convo, so um, uh, you, you're definitely welcome to try. It's just yeah, likelihood likely. of success you would you would think is not super high. Yeah, but we have a weapon that's very interesting to them, so. Yeah, maybe we can bargain. <laughs> Zerithel, not I've for the weapon, bargain. though. <laughs> not for the weapon, but for their lives. Lives, lives. I said lives. Um. So anyway, if you want to try to commune with with Zerithel, you can uh, try rolling a religion check. Sure. <laughs> Is it already noon? It's it's like no, it's still... two o'clock. Mm. Oh my god, bro. Okay. I okay. press so. Um, I'll just deal with Tamaris and then. Mm -hmm. Of course, you yeah. tell me what you're gonna do. So, um, so Tamaris sort of sits down to pray. Um, 
doing the best he can, not a super religious person. Yeah. Um, doing the best he can to like maybe mimic what Alistair does. <laughs> um, and the end times. And um, as you get into it, you get into a sort of meditative state and it's hard to describe. You almost feel as though there's something more than just your consciousness um, in your head right now, but you're not really able to make anything out of it um, as as you release it and uh, and give up after a while of trying. Damn. Well, what do we do until tomorrow? <laughs> do we... Same big, you bad, evil guy until noon. <laughs> Just me? Uh, I'm gonna go to a tavern and drink. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, I, no, I'll I'm do not that. saying I'll that over that. I'm not saying that over and over again. A killer bear? Yeah. We could do so that. Some combat Seven practice. Gold. Um as they leave, they hear me say big, bad, evil guy as I'm slumped on the floor. Interesting. Waiting, waiting for noon. Okay, well, are you guys gonna go head out and try to kill a bear? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, why not? Let's go kill a bear. <clears throat> Seven gold, why not? I... I am not doing this one for the money because that is such a pittance to what we're worth. It's to kill time and a bear. Hmm. One moment. Turns out it wasn't a bear. It was a giant ten foot demon. Where bear? Oh good. Oh no, you've you've caught on. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's yeah. just a In reality we was like shit, I didn't know they were gonna try to do this fucking stupid bear thing. Maybe it was just the big <laughs> rat that I sucked up earlier. <laughs> It's actually, it's actually but, cursed. It's a cursed Kirby chart. Everything gains um, <laughs> 20 sizes. Um, oh. Okay, so you guys make your way out <laughs> into the forest um, like you were told. And it's it's sort of a, a lightly lightly wooded forest. Um, and it's about, it's a few miles away from the, from the riverbank. Um, and as you go in, I need somebody to make a survival check to try to pick up on any tracks or anything of the kind. I could do it. I know what it's like to be alive and survive. <laughs> Is it a space in between? Yeah, you have to do that. Yeah. Point R space. Fourteen. Okay, so uh, you make your way out into the forest, and quite quickly, well, not that quickly. <laughs> After a little while of walking, you um, you do actually manage to come upon a trail, and you follow it, and uh, at the end of it is a deer lying on the ground dead. Okay. Um, and it's got a hey. big old big old gash in the side of it, but nothing's eaten it. Which is strange for a dead animal in the forest. Yeah, it's Yikes. Bear. You're thinking it's a bear? Uh, it's a bear no, too. It's probably not a bear, because the bear would probably eat it. It's probably Weather. a demon, TBH. It's probably something worth more than seven gold. Mm. Yeah. We'll bargain for more gold if it is. Eight yeah. gold. <laughs> Or we can just bribe the priest for money. Yeah. Is there like a mm -hmm. trail around here, or is it just dead? Is there a is there a sign of struggle? Um. I'm willing to roll an investigation check. Yeah, roll roll an investigation yeah. check. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay. Um. They're, uh. They're definitely tracks, but it's like. They look like deer tracks. There are no bear tracks around here, that's for sure. Yeah. It's a wendigo. The deer is just dead. There's nothing else here. There's like a there's like a big fucking claw gash in its side. Um, but it's just dead. Hmm. Well, this is fucking weird. Uh nothing around us. Like no broken tree branches from trees or or maybe just totally fallen over trees. Um as you continue to look around and your eyes drift upwards, you see there are a lot of broken branches up like up higher on the trees, but not at ground level. Yikes. I think it's demons. Uh, yeah, or something. I don't. I can't really think of anything. That He's would... been here for days already. I mean, Probably. unless we can roll a check. Yeah. Do I know any, of any kind of anything that hangs out in trees and just kills things and doesn't eat them? <laughs> um, definitely no. Like, Man. no, no animals you can think of. Is the blood still in it? Uh, mostly. It's not vampires. Not vegetarian <laughs> vampires, at least. <laughs> Might not be a ritual either. Mm. Definitely demons. What if we... I don't know. Unless we've just Can found I... a tribe and this is their decoration. Yeah. Can I climb up the trees and, like, Naruto run through the trees? <laughs> and, like, follow the trail? <laughs> or, um, like, are the trees probably, just space? Probably know, just not, but just, you like, can... Uh, like, can I follow a trail from the yeah. ground? Yeah, you can try. Um. So, you follow it um, deeper and deeper into the forest, and um, along your way, you happen to find uh, another deer, much like the first, also just dead, not eaten. And it's, it's what's even more odd is it's like, they seem to be dead for a while. You would expect the first animal to kill them would eat them. Mm -hmm. But if not that, something else would come after and eat it. Yeah, like a scavenger um, or something. Yeah, so it's like like a wolf or a coyote or something would come and steal a kill. But that's also not happened, which makes it even more weird. Okay. Does something look weird about the body? Other than it, you know, being slashed. It's like black and super decaying or like... I don't know. Um. Not really. It, um. It looks fairly normal to you. Um. But as you guys are stopped to investigate this deer, you hear. Even further into the forest, um, the crack. What, what sounds like the cracking of branches. Like right above us? Well, not not right above you, but above you and off in the distance a little bit. Cool. So I'm gonna hide, and uh, I don't know. Move towards the sound, I guess. Okay. Is uh, anyone else gonna prepare anything? I'll just walk. Classic. Um, can I put a bear trap down? Or whatever my hunting trap down? Sure, where are you gonna put it? Um, where do we think the sound's coming from? I don't know, somewhere. It's probably gonna come from this though. Put it near Mort if he's just gonna stand out there. Okay, sure. And then I'm gonna scarecrow it. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to the... Uh, I'm scarecrowing it. I'm having a right, deja, deja vu moment right now. 
Deja vu to monkey. Yeah, yeah monkey. sure, we'll do that. It worked so good last time. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Trap. <laughs> so, um, as you guys are setting up, the uh, cracking of tree branches gets uh, seems to get louder and closer. Oh yeah, um, I'm definitely getting louder. Okay, so I'll have you roll a stealth check, and then, um, Gerald, is there uh, something that you would be doing? I'm gonna use mimicry to, uh, create the noise of a deer. Cool. Me bait. Oh, we've got two baits. Pretty cool. I look like a deer, so this will work perfectly. A deer. A deer. You look like a husk, but yeah, we'll go with that. I kind of position my hands up to where my head is to create antlers. So, um... I rolled a 20 for my stealth check. Yeah, as, uh, Tamaris, as you move a little bit further into the forest and, um, and hide, you see barreling through the forest above you, um, half flying, half swinging and and crashing into trees um you see a huge um and and quite disgusting looking um creature with uh goat looking legs and and huge tusks and small wings out its back uh -oh. um as you see uh this monster barreling towards you i forgot um, about this guy and i need everyone to roll initiative do you guys remember the giant demon we ran away from? Oh yeah. This is this is not the one we ran away it from. It wasn't before. this. Oh, I thought it's similar to this, but this is pretty cute. You got little nippies. Yeah. Cute. Seven. Where's the initiative thing? Um, like your modifier. Yeah, using beyond. Um, so if you look on your character sheet, it's like right at the top, right in the middle. I got ah. four. So how do I how do I add the plus thing? Oh my god. Um, so I'm learning. Leave it alone. No, I I said that to my role. I got a one. In the in the chat, uh, type sorry. like exclamation mark R one d twenty plus four because that's your initiative modifier. There's a space after the R. Nice. First try. Good enough. Okay, that's, a, that's an atrocious initiative roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I oh my god, because I got a natural one. <laughs> so I go, I go tomorrow, Holy and shit. so does everybody else, except for Gerald Nightingale. I'm going to keep saying that just because I, I like the name, so sorry, not sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I like how you continually use the one with the fewest hit points and lowest AC as your bait. Um, <laughs> That's just how it works out. Because yeah. he's about to fucking die as this thing goes for him. Oh. Um, <laughs> but I'm hiding. I get, I get like a surprise round, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, probably. I prepare yeah, frost armor. I prepare so my frost it. armor. I prepare my frost armor. <laughs> I prepare my frost done. armor. You should have done that. You should have done that when you were I prepare my up. frost armor. You've been playing this, I'm sorry, you've been playing this character for a long time. <laughs> and we've also done a very similar fight before where you made the same mistake. <laughs> so uh, you should have done it before. I hate to do it to you. Oh my god, um, I never learned. So Damaris, as it barrels past you, we'll give you your surprise round. Oh, okay, cool. Kick it. Oh no, I don't have any of my... This is just in slow motion, I'm like, kick <laughs> Because, uh... Man, Mort really about to get one shot here, huh? Finally, it's what I deserve. Sorry, I want to hit with two daggers. Does it go right by me, or do I need to shoot it with a bow? Um, we'll say it goes right by you. Oh man, I had it for... It, for attacking with a second weapon in your offhand, it's like minus three, right? Um... 
thing. I thought I was gonna say it in two weapon flag. Uh, one sec. Oh, it says you don't add your ability modifier to the yeah. damage of this of the bonus attack. That would Plus be it. Modifiers. So my first one gets my. I assume it's the proficiency bonus or the dex bonus. That's the same. Because it's a uh, finesse weapon or something. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first one. It doesn't hit, does okay. it? 18, that hits. Y'all are going to be real surprised when my next character is a banana farmer. <laughs> <laughs> that one does not hit. Damn. Okay, so... Damage. You can also roll sneak attack damage on this one because you... Oh, nice, yes. Yeah, we're so... hiding. So that's just the. Where did I do? Oh, I'm done. Okay, cool. So I did four damage with the dagger, and then sneak attack damage is a lot. It's four d six. Okay, so sixteen total damage. Yeah. Um. Uh, the so you get him good in the back, but as you stab him, it, it's it's almost like his flesh is like, um, uh, like far harder for your dagger to cut, and it um, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel like it worked super well. Hmm. Um, if it if it matters, it says the daggers do piercing damage. Type. Uh. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it does matter, but just not in the good way. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> um, uh, Forget I said anything. Okay, so next up we have its turn, and it's sort of like, it noticed it got stabbed in the back, but it's it's sort of like barreling along its path. Um, and, uh, and it's going to come down right on Mort. And uh, what's your AC? Uh, my AC is 200, so I'd like to see it. Too. No, my AC is 12. Hmm. That's uh, real lucky. Uh, wait, um, what? Um, so he tries to bite you, um, but but misses because you saw him coming from a mile away. Um, and then he's gonna try to swipe you with his claws. Uh, and the first one hits. The second one also hits. Um. And you're gonna take um You're gonna take twenty damage that he slashes you twice with his claws. Oh. Yikes. I'm you're still, still alive, alive. Though, right? You can't get rid of me, bitch. <laughs> I'm not going nowhere. Um and then we will go to Gerald's turn. Yep. So what what starts? Am I am I being lunged at or? Um. So he's currently standing in front of Mort, clawing at him. Um. Okay. So you're you're not like at risk of getting hit by him right now. You're just sort of standing off to the side. Yes. I'll attack with my scythe. Okay. So you're gonna run up. Um. Definitely close enough. Uh, and so you can roll your attack. And when you take the attack action, you get two attacks, so you'll roll twice. Yeah, so I do the R, D. And do I need to add a modifier? Because. Yeah, I'm so like... if, you look in your, if you look in your weapon attacks uh, thing, you can see the scythe has plus seven. Yep. Okay, so the first one, on, uh, you're sort of, you, you you swing to him, but um, he sort of like kicks your scythe away with his with his goat foot, and the first one doesn't hit. You roll the second one. He 
Here we go. Yeah, so now having him off balance, you get a much better shot at him. Um, and you do manage to, uh, to, to get him with this one, so you can roll the damage. And you'll see right beside it on your character sheet, it says the, uh, like, 1d10 plus 4, so you can roll that for damage. Uh... There we go. Oh, put slash or er, exclamation oh. mark R R D ten. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> Remember Pumba from The Lion King? This is him now. Feel old, old yet? <laughs> Yeah, the, the demon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you did it again. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> no, you gotta put one D10. Not RD. Oh. I don't know why I did that. It's okay, numbers are hard. There numbers we go. are very hard. Numbers are terribly hard. Okay, so you get in for uh you get in for six damage. Um and then now you if you want you can use your bonus attack or you your bonus action to punch him. Yep, so that would be... So if you look at the top, it says unarmed strike, and uh, that's also... 1d6. So you have to roll the attack, so d20 plus 7. There we go. Nice, that one hits as well. So you can roll the damage, which is, uh, like you said beside it, 1d6 plus 4. One D six, yeah. Yep. Nice. Uh, and so that'll be the end of your turn. Um, hypothetically, yep. you could like move away, but I don't think you want to. Um, no. And we'll go to Criella's turn. Okay. So how much health does it have left? Do we think? We don't. How many? Presumably a lot. <laughs> <laughs> too much damage to it just now. So far you've done 21 damage to it. Not terrible. You have collectively done as much as it did to Mort. Yeah, so not the best. What do you mean that little bastard almost killed me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I'm gonna try to hit it with is it close enough to hit it with the tried? Um, you'd have to, like, run up and hit him, but you could, yeah. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Um, do you have the stat block for the trident in front of you? I had to make one based off the stuff you gave me. Uh, yeah, I, I just mean, like, I just mean, like, the generic, um... Yeah, she has uh, to. Okay. Like, I the, the, the damage that. type and stuff. Uh, yeah, piercing, it's 1d6 plus 1. Uh, and so it's it's versatile. So if you use uh, if you use two hands, you get a d8. Mm. Yeah, let's do that. I'll do two handed. Okay. Um. Come on, come on. This is wrong. You can... Are you gonna do lightning damage to it? I'm using the angel bait. Yeah, but can't you, like, buff yourself or something? I could do that, but... I'll take 1d6, and then I have to take a short rest before I can do it on a different weapon, so... Okay, so you'll put what type of damage on? Just lightning? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can go ahead and roll your attacks then. Okay, so hold on, I need to roll the damage on myself first. Yep. 
Oh god, okay. Well, I mean, it, like, that just means it does more damage to him. That's yeah. true. Okay, so... We have more health than we used to. <laughs> we have health potions. Okay, that one hits. And you wanna do the second one just um plus two. What's you it should be like plus your strength modifier. Um uh, and then plus your proficiency bonus. Which is it so also have a plus one because it's magic. Um only, only to angels. Okay, okay. So what's your what's your strength modifier? Negative one. <laughs> Negative one? Ooh, that's rough. So it is it is just plus two. Um, so the 18 hits, uh, and do you want to go in and roll the second one, and then we'll do damage all at once. Oh yeah, like my second strike with it. Yep. That one also hits. Okay, so... 2d8. 2d8 minus 2. Plus 12. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, 2d8 plus 10. Oops. <laughs> Almost. There we go. Okay, so, um, uh, this attack, you sort of wind up and stab into him once, pull back, stab into him again. Um, and uh, as far as you can tell, you're, um, not great at using the trident, but it, uh, uh, it, this one does seem to cleanly stab into him. Um, and after each of them, uh, he crackles with lightning and, and sort of gives off a roar. Um, as you deal 22 damage to him. Sweet. And then we'll go to Damage's turn. I feel like I'm being skipped here. You're after Damage. Damn. I, I did a sneak attack and then I also... Like, yeah. Danced. So, uh, I'm gonna run up to him and, uh... You'd say that I get my sneak attack bonus because we're all like, surrounded by my... Yeah. Dagger one hits. Dagger two, Dagger two does not hit. Damn. Okay. And then. Um. Don't you have a short sword? I do, but I was trying to attack twice. With... So uh, you can use short sword and then dagger in the offhand. Oh, that's a good idea. Because short sword is finesse, I believe. So it's uh... fine. So yeah, we'll we'll treat we'll treat the first one as if it was a short sword. Um, so, so you get a little bit of extra, um, and you can roll damage with okay. sneak attack bonus. Uh, that's... But you get to add sneak attack. So once again, um, uh, I'm not too it, good. <laughs> it, it feels it, it feels as though his flesh is far harder to slash than anything else you've ever tried to cut. Um, but like you do at least land the clean hit on him. Okay. Uh, and then now we will go to Mort's turn. Um, I'm gonna do something brave and bold, and that's never been done before. Okay. I'm gonna chill touch him. 
<laughs> You're up point blank range. So? So you'll do it at disadvantage. What if I pretend that I was really far away? Do you want to maybe cast like a big boy spell? Um. See, when we were on um, Molten Fire thing, I'll tell you one thing I really liked. Mm -hmm. uh, were my macros. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I started just to make some on a notepad. Mm. Uh, I will do Ice Knives at him. But it's all my spells are ranged spells. Ice Knives also ranged spell, yeah. All, but all <laughs> my spells are ranged spells, so what does he want from me? Don't You don't have any spells that like force him to make a saving throw or something? I have Dragon's Breath. Oh, well, that's an AoE spell. Yeah, but it's. Which would I'm... hit all of your friends. <laughs> exactly, so, like, what do you. So I'm gonna. I'll reiterate, I'll use Chill Touch. <laughs> okay, cool. Roll it. <laughs> Alright, a disadvantage. Okay. Damn. They really Almost. got me. They caught me slipping in the club, guys. <laughs> they caught me slipping. 10 for the first one. Okay. You, well, you miss. Um, Ten for the second one. Yeah, Let's... eighteen for the second. Uh, unfortunately, at, at point blank range, you don't accomplish much. Hell. Um, <laughs> and so we're gonna go. Unless you have anything else to do with your turn. Um. Do I is Agatha's armor uh, bonus action or is it a spell? Excuse me. You tell me. Damn. <laughs> Well, it takes one action to cast, so I'm gonna go ahead and say it's a bonus action. Okay, well, <laughs> not quite. Um, Damn, really? But we're gonna go. We're gonna go back to its turn. Mm -hmm. um, clown? Is it now? Is <laughs> it now realize it's surrounded? Um, it uh, it, it begins um, to emit a, a sort of light, and I need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw. Damn, me too. Yes. Especially me, huh? Um, so Jerry, that's the D10, and then I pointed out where the saving throw box was to you earlier. Um, yep. so you look in there for the wisdom one, and then add that to a roll of a D20. Get rolled on. Fuck. Man, you guys just aren't rolling the important stuff rolling, well, huh? I've been rolling shit today, dude. Can't wait to die. Um... I can't wait for you to die either. Oh my god. Because I'm not gonna die. Oh my <laughs> god. So, um I push more in Raleigh. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like that um it's like the Tomodachi uh what is that game? The me game? Well knows what I'm talking about. Okay, so uh sorry. You guys are now all frightened, so you have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of its fear isn't within your line of sight. So while you're looking at it, you have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls. Oh um, and you can't willingly move closer to it. Hmm. Uh, problem, huh? <laughs> and then um, it is going to um, make some claw attacks at Cruella because she's the one that uh, hurt him the most. So he's gonna send two claw attacks at you. What's your EC? 14. Okay, so the first one hits. The second one also hits. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Damn. Uh, and you are gonna take. Thirteen, uh, thirteen slashing damages. He slashes you with one claw, uh, and then comes back at you with the other. Um, and then we'll go to Gerald's turn. So I'm currently frightened at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Is it possible I could use stillness of the mind? That is exactly what that is for. <laughs> there we go. I'll do that then. Okay. So you use your action to end one effect on yourself that is causing you to be charmed or frightened. Yep. Awesome. Um, and then now might be like a good, a good time to, to uh, maybe try to use like, um, patient defense if you're like if you were like worried about getting hit or something. Um, but I mean that's um, up to you. 
So I can still attack like normal then, yeah? You can't attack because you use your action to do stillness of mind. Um, mm. But it, like, if you wanted to use a key point, you could take patient defense, which means you take the dodge, or take use the a dodge. key point to do disengage or dash. Uh, I'm going to use step of the wind, disengage, and get some distance. Okay, cool. So you use one key point to disengage. Um, yep. And then are you going to run your full movement away from him? Yeah, I need to close. I need to, to make a gap between us. Okay, so the full 45 feet away. Yep. Um, awesome. And then we'll go to Criella's turn. Hmm. I'm about half health. Okay. Well, does he look like he's bloodied? Like, should I try to take it an attack with disadvantage? <laughs> um... He's looking worse than he did before. <laughs> like, you, you you, guys have definitely gotten a couple good hits on him, but he's still in fighting shape. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna try to hit him again twice with the Angel Bane, and it still has the lightning on because I yep. haven't rested yet. I hear so if you kill, kill him, he dies. <laughs> wow. Do you have any other insightful knowledge about him? He looks like Pumbaa from Timon and Pumbaa from the hit uh, movie The Jungle Book. <laughs> the first one misses. <laughs> Your, uh, uh, no. Twist and Fury. Well, so that's, so those are, those are both for the, like, rolling at disadvantage, technically. So now you roll the second one at disadvantage. You need me to roll again. Wait. Yeah, so roll roll twice more. Because you were rolling the first one at disadvantage. She honey, you rolled a D8. Wait. Oh, that is a D8, yeah. Um, hello. <laughs> so roll the D20 twice, actually. I'll just do this. You can do two D20 and you can just add it. What? Because it'll it will show the two individual. Okay, so 2d26 and 7. So the first attack definitely misses. Um, and then, so just do that command again for your second attack. Mm. So that one misses also. And do you have anything else you want to do with your turn? No, that's it right now. Okay, so roll the wisdom saving throw to see if you can break out of the fear. Yeah. <laughs> it's also it's also at it's at disadvantage too. You, you well, she rolled a one on the first one. Yeah, so. so it doesn't doesn't quite matter, but you definitely <laughs> definitely don't do it. Um, so Damaris, it's you. Oh God. So I assume I have to do the my turn, and then I get to roll to break out. Yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna attack him. Miss. And then roll that's twice. Because I'm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So and then you can roll for like your dagger shot twice. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Um. All right. Wisdom saving through. Yeah. Cunning action. If I disengage, do I lose my frighten? Probably not. I have to uh, break no. Okay, yeah, so I'm just trying to break that. Plus one. Yeah, you uh, you get out of it. Um, you're you're able to you're able to shake it off. Um, and uh, and we'll go to Mort's turn. All right, I want to do something you'd never believe I could do before. Okay. I wonder if he's gonna chill touch. I'm gonna chill touch. Nice. 
Oopsie. Let's, well, 1d20 plus this. Um, that's a good one, but it's a different wow. one. That's the first one. Yeah, wow. that's pretty good, but let's see let's how the game it. decides to fuck me here. Let's <laughs> hope you just get a 15 instead. Damn, they caught me oh, slipping. They caught me <laughs> slipping. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the keys. Oh my god. Just, <laughs> just like take the take your most common command and just control C it and then just paste yeah, it in every time. I just, just um, making notepad. Just yeah, like, so you managed to hit with chill touch. Oh okay, my god, um, you still did it. Despite your close range. Um and it's lucky because disadvantage only applies once. So uh <laughs> Go ahead Yay. and roll damage. He's all like, ice to meet you. 10 damage. Nice. Ice. I think he's weak to ice. He's not. I don't think so. But he, look, he looks like he's dying. Um, wishful thinking. He sort of, <laughs> sort of lets out a, lets Someone out a scream. Someone once told me that when he we kill him, he dies. <laughs> and uh, as he... <laughs> As he does, we go back to his turn, and uh, you see him sort of like close his eyes for a second, um, and then all of a sudden he disappears and reappears 60 feet away in the direction from where he came. Oh, oh my well, god, true. he's running away! And we'll go to Gerald's turn. Um, I want to dash after him. Okay. Um, your headset's messing up or something. Uh oh. That's better. Damn. And I want to. Do you want arm strike? Um. Uh, so did you want to? Um. So sp like we'll spend a key point to do step of the wind to chase after him. A yeah. And then and then that way you can attack with your action, right? Yeah. Um, and so, did you just want to attack with the scythe? Because I mean, it does more damage than your fists, right? So. Yeah, we'll do it with the scythe. Yeah. Um, so you can go ahead and roll, and you get two. So two, twenty, two d twenty. Yep. Uh, and what modifier would that have, if any? It'll be plus seven. Plus seven. Okay. Yeah, because my weapon, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm learning. Holy shit. Okay, so we have 18 and 16, both plus 7. So those both definitely hit. Um, so you can roll damage. So 2d10 plus 8. Nice. Ah, we're getting somewhere. That's, Almost. that's, that's, a, that's a 1. We're, we're close. <laughs> Nice. That's a lot of damage. Better damage than we've been doing anyway. Um. Nice. So you're uh, you're quite able to cut through him as well. Um. Because your attacks count as magical. Um. So you swing your scythe at them twice, and you almost like cut his legs out from under him. Um. And he falls over, and he looks quite weak on the ground as we go to Criella's turn. But he's not dead. Not yet, but he's close. Yeah, I'm gonna try to hit him twice. You're still feared. Well, oh, yeah. so I'm you gonna can't. Still do it. You can't move towards him. Okay, so I can't reach. Um, I guess you could throw the trident if you wanted to. You'd have to sacrifice health to make it come back to you, though. I mean, you can just pick it up. Yeah, but that's not cool. <laughs> it'll it'll also it'll be a, it'll it'll be a disadvantage, but um, you can try to throw it if you want. Okay. Or can you cast any blood magic on it? I don't know what you can do. That's why I always ask. Well, so she already has already the lightning. On, she already has the lightning on it. Can you like um, curse their blood or something? But, like, you could use a bonus action to make a blood offering of yourself and sacrifice a bunch of hit points to try to make it do more damage. But I'd recommend against it because you're already pretty close to killing it. Um, and you're probably going to miss, so. Yeah, but I thought she could do something to get something disadvantage on something. 
Oh, like a blood curse? Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I could, but... I'd, I'd recommend it just, now? just, like, just throwing it. Okay, I'm just gonna throw it. Oh, also, I need Mort to roll his wisdom save because I didn't see it. So he... to throw it, it's okay. the same. It's... Uh, it's the same roll. Um. So one d twenty. Well, I guess thrown you would use your dexterity. Yeah. Instead of your strength, like instead of your strength, like if you wanted to. I'm still frightened. Um, yeah, said... Mort's still frightened. Mm. So when when you this throw, you use your my... dex. Okay. Well, it's a disadvantage, so you're gonna miss. Um, Damn, so you you I throw it, throw and it me. it sort of it sort of lodges in a tree um, beside him, um, and you have well, you have trouble looking at him. But uh, you can roll a wisdom save to see if you break out of the fear. Which I hope I do. What was about, what about the trident being Poseidon? Unfortunately, no. Does not break out of the fear. Damn. So close. You're one one point away. Um, but we'll go to Damaris' turn. Okay, so he's 60 feet away. So... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my 30 feet. Mm -hmm. If I want to throw daggers, it says range twenty to sixty feet. If I yeah, well, I mean, you could you could cutting action too, like to just get up close and stab him. He's on the ground, so you'd get an advantage with a melee attack. Oh, okay, cool. Then I'm gonna do that. I won't get yeah. to attack twice if I use my cutting action. That's what I was trying to do. But it, I forgot you said he wasn't prone. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that, and then um, stab him with my short sword. If he's on the ground. Do I get advantage? You get advantage. Yep. <clears throat> Ask for. Uh, unfortunately, no. Yeah, just like trip over a rock or something. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Um. So we're gonna go to Mort. Um. You can't move closer. And we'll gonna... also attack at disadvantage because ground. I'm gonna do which something is... no one expected. Um, Chill touch. No curvy jar. I'm on the edge. Oh. oh. Okay. Try it. No. I square myself. Breathe in, breathe out. I've just got to make the toughest shot of my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, I ready. I steady my hand. I ready my um, aim at the to, at Pumba. Yep. Um, and I fire. Cruella got sucked into the jar. Oh I, my god! For real? You should have. You should have read the description. <laughs> Damn. And it's a uh, your demon boy's turn. Well, well so he he's gonna try to he's gonna try to make his way to a knee and try to bite oh, it just says um, the closest creature and try to bite Gerald um, so he is definitely going to get to bite you um, wait Creella needs to make a saving throw oh that's true dingus you didn't read the description <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay yeah roll What's a saving, my saving throw, throw? At, at disadvantage, it's uh, charisma. Yeah, you gotta roll a charisma. Oh god, well. At, at disadvantage too, so. Well, kind of unlikely. Damn. Creella gets sucked into the jar. Yep. Um, so. She's no longer frightened. As it gets to a knee and <laughs> tries to bite Gerald. I'm pretty frightened up inside of a jar now. Um, he gets a really good bite right into your little crow leg. Um, and deals 13 damage to you. Yikes. Um, uh, and then we're gonna go to Creella's turn. Who can is stuck I do a turn the in the jar? Um, you can cast magic you can do in the things, jar. You can do things from inside the jar. Um, I'm assuming Mort's gonna let you out, um, so we don't know, have to roll how many hours you're gonna be in there. Um, but there's not really a way to break out, but like you could, uh, if you have some sort of magic, like you can cast that from inside the jar. 
Don't you know Chill Touch as well? Yeah, I do. Yeah, cast so I mean, you can you can you can cast that from inside the jar. That's what I was gonna do. Okay, so. And it comes from out. It, it'll. It's not just inside the jar. It like comes from the jar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Am I still at a disadvantage? Because you are okay. still frightened, you are still at disadvantage. Well, I didn't account for that. Um, so it misses, unfortunately. And you can roll your saving throw. Sit in the jar very angrily. Um. Oh wait, I fully skipped over Gerald's turn, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get back to you. We'll see yep. you soon. <laughs> No, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Gerald's I'm turn. I'm just in this jar, man. Um, I am going to say, you don't even need to roll, because you're almost guaranteed a hit. Um, yeah. Good enough to kill him, because you're rolling an advantage, like, three times. Um, yeah. And he has, like, five health left. So, um, he's on the on the ground in front of you. You take your take your scythe and just ram it straight down into him um and uh and get a good shot and as you do his body almost starts to like rapidly decay and almost sort of melt even damn so is there no evidence of this thing i mean it's still there it's just like decaying in front of your eyes okay, let's, uh, let's bones don't decay, bag up what we can i'm gonna cut its head off and shove it in the bag of wine. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Uh, trend. Way, it's proof that it wasn't a bear, and I'm gonna demand 500 gold. I think they're gonna give you 500 gold for this? Um, it'll at least hopefully we'll be more make than him. seven. It'll have to pay. <laughs> well, um, that's great. I'm just gonna go to the washroom again, and then we'll. <laughs> oh my god. Continue. Yeah, I'll take a loot break as well. At this rate, I can't make a part three because it'll be like one hour for part one, two hours for part two, and then five minutes for part three. Yeah. Oh, like your YouTube video? Yeah. You can just cut that up however you want. Hmm. Like even this part right here with us talking about <laughs> editing the video. Editing my videos? That sounds like a lot of work. You guys don't just put slap music onto a video and upload it? Wow. <laughs> Jeez, dog. I still expect a full on uh, slideshow montage. Oh, of course. I already know exactly what book is going to be Coco. <laughs> okay, cool. It'll have some IRL moments too. Okay, cool. Mm hmm, of course. <clears throat> 